Hi, thank you so much for joining me. In this video segment, I want to look at the mathematical relationship and the formulas that arise as we study the different variables that describe the state or the changes in a gas. So there are four variables we're going to uh, discuss right now, volume, pressure, temperature, and moles. And there was a group of, of guys that many years ago, I'm not much of a historian, uh, who studied this. And inevitably, either the teacher or your state standards will want you to know the names of the people for whom the law was attributed. They didn't always do that exact uh, research, but the law was named after them to honor their work. And their Boyle, Charles and Gay-Lussac and Avogadro. Mathematically, when you do your problems involving gas laws, I like to focus in on the combined. And in another video, you will see how I always start with the combined uh, in order to work my problems in which there are changes in volume, pressure, temperature, or moles. Now, any good experiment is going to have one independent, one dependent variable and keep the rest controlled. So Boyle studied pressure and volume as independent and dependent variables, which mean that the temperature and the number of moles have to be held constant or are controlled. Right? Now, if the volume is increased, what we find is the pressure will decrease. All right, I will talk a little bit more about a molecular explanation of why that is true in another video. So right now we're just going to focus in directly on filling out this chart. So this is an inverse relationship. Now, the formula that I use is P1V1 is equal to P2V2. And so you would be given three of these variables and asked to solve for the fourth. And uh, one and two is really just, it doesn't really matter which you designate one and two, as long as the correct pressure is linked to the correct volume. In terms of unit, the units have to be the same on both sides of the equation. Uh, we don't demand liters. They could be milliliters and milliliters. They could be deciliters and deciliters, although that's not likely. The key is they just have to be the same on both sides. Now, this doesn't show that inverse uh, relationship, but I think if I solve it for one of the variables, so if I solve it for P1, I have P to V2 over V1. So you now see that indirect relationship there between pressure and volume a little bit more clearly. And you may think of a phrase to memorize that, um, Boyle was very pretty. One of my students came up with Boyles are very pussy. It's kind of gross, but hey, it works. All right, uh, Charles's law. Uh, Charles watches TV, so he studied temperature and volume and therefore kept pressure and moles constant. Now, if you increase your temperature, I think that might be intuitive that you are going to increase your volume. The molecules will move faster, push against the sides of the container and push it out and increase the volume. More on that later. And so this is a direct relationship, and we're going to write V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. I'll again solve for V1, and I get V2 times T1 over T2. So now I think it's a little clear you see that direct mathematical relationship. Um, Gay-Lussac, Gay-Lussac -Sac covered temperature and pressure, and that means he kept volume and moles constant. Uh, if you increase the temperature, uh, when it's hotter out, um, you're going to have the air pressure pushes on the tires, either increases their volume or increases their pressure or both. 
So that is also a direct relationship. And so we would say T1, P, P1, T1 is equal to P2, T2. All right. Now, finally, we have Avogadro. Avogadro, hopefully not surprisingly, studied moles, volume in moles. Uh, and so therefore, we're going to keep temperature and pressure constant. You put more air into a balloon, the balloon's going to expand. So you increase the moles, you increase the volume. So that's a direct relationship. Okay, and I made a mistake here. Sorry about that. P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. Make sure you fix that. Okay, uh, and I'll annotate that in the video. So we would have V1 over N1 is equal to V2 over N2. Now for me, I like to combine all these together. And so I'm, I'm not going to really talk about this aspect of it. And let's just look at the formula. If we have P1 V1 over T1 N1 is equal to P2 V2 over to T2 N2. And that's the one I like to have my students memorize. Um, so what we do is you slap that formula down. Anything that's constant, you cross it off, and you end up with the individual law that you're looking for. Make sure you come up with a way, like Charles watches TV, um, for you to memorize that. Come up with some mnemonic device. Uh, there's a good chance your teacher wants to memorize, have you memorize that. In fact, Boyle's Law was a question on who wants to be a millionaire. So, hey, you never know. This could be worth some money there. Uh, if not, at least it's worth some learning. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time.